All right. So let's talk about, so yesterday you guys got to use the dissecting microscopes. Today we're going to be using these compound microscopes. And they work a little differently. They have some different um, parts that you need to be able to use. So we'll just review that. But it's called a compound microscope because, like, what's a compound word? Yeah, two words put together to make one word, like um, doghouse, compound word. Well, this is called a compound microscope because it has two lenses that will magnify the image as we're looking at it. So the two lenses here are the eyepiece lens and the objective lens. And each one has a lens that enlarges the image that we're seeing. So that's why it's called a compound microscope. And so when, one of the things you're going to have to do is calculate the total amount of magnification. And so the way that you're going to do that is you multiply the power of the eyepiece that you're using times the power of the objective lens you're using. So for example, if I have a 10x eyepiece on my microscope and I have a 30x objective lens, what's my total magnification when I'm using that. Michael? 300. Yeah, 300x. And what that means is what I'm seeing under the microscope is 300 times larger than its actual size. It's enlarging it 300 times. When we are using these microscopes, it's going to be important that you're careful with them. They are expensive, so we don't want to drop them or be too rough with them. So when you're carrying them, always carry them from where you're going um, to your desk with two hands, one hand on the bottom, one hand on the arm, so that they don't fall. They, they also get sort of out of alignment, out of focus if they're sort of banged around a little bit. So let's talk about how we actually are going to use these because when we do a microscope lab, usually I spend half the period going from micro microscope to microscope because people are having a hard time finding the object or seeing it, getting in focus. But if you follow the steps, it's really not that difficult. So let's talk about this. So first of all, on these compound microscopes, you have three separate objective lenses that we can use. And you go from one to the other by rotating the nose piece until one of the objective is clicked in. Now that's the other thing. It has to be like clicked in. If you're like halfway between, you're not going to see anything. You have to make sure it's like in the notch so that you're seeing. Okay. So we always start when we're viewing something on low power. That's the key thing. Sometimes people will say, oh, I can't see anything, and they're on high power. You always start with low power first. That's the shortest objective. It's got a red ring around it. <coughs> on the compound microscopes, what we look at is always mounted on what we call a slide, a little rectangular piece of glass. This is an insect mounted on a glass slide. And we put the slide on the stage, this flat part, Put it underneath the uh, stage clips. Okay. And we make sure that it's centered. So I turn it on. You'll see the light turns on in the microscope. And the light shines up from the light source through the stage. And you want like the object you're looking at to be right in the center of that light. Once you have it there, you're going to look through the eyepiece. And it may or may not be visible. What you need to do is focus the image using this large course adjustment knob. As you're looking through there, you're going to move that until it comes into focus. Like right now, I can see the, the inside. 
So you have to get it perfect under low power before you can switch to medium power. That's the key thing. Always get it set on the lower power, then you can switch. So let's say now I have it here. It's in focus. I make sure it's centered so that when I zoom in, I'm zooming in on the object. Then, after I'm sure it's in focus and centered, I could switch to the next power, medium power. Ava? Yes. So medium power in our microscopes has a yellow ring around it. So if I rotate this nose piece, I'm selecting medium power. And when I look in there, it should be in focus or almost in focus though. I may have to make a few little adjustments with the course adjustment, but this one, for example, is pretty close. And again, if I want to switch to high power, I need to make sure it's in focus, I need to make sure it's centered, and then I can switch to high power. High power in our microscopes is blue. It's the longest objective lens. It magnifies 40 times. So I switch to high power. And now what's important here, look how close the objective lens is to the slide when I'm on high power. It's like a couple millimeters away. So when it's time to focus under high power, you're only going to use this fine adjustment knob, the smaller knob, okay? because that's going to only move the stage a tiny amount. What happens if you start using this course adjustment, you could hit the slide with the objective lens and break it. That's not good. So when you're on high power, you're only using the small fine adjustment knob. It probably won't need too much focusing. If you had it in focus on your medium, it'll be close. So now I can see the leg of this insect very clearly and it's in focus. Well, yeah. Jordan? How can you, like, is there a knob where you can move it forward, backwards, and side to side? The micro, the, the slide? Yeah. No, some microscopes have that. Our microscopes, you just move it with your hand. But some microscopes do have it, yes. Yeah. My, the, other, the other microscopes we used to have had that, that part. Yeah? Um, do you wipe your hand, like, where the, like, little, like, thing is? Like, can you see the germs? No, because again, the compound microscope, whatever you're looking at, has to be very, very thin. Um, you could, like, swab your hand, put it in, like, a petri dish, stain the cells, and then you might be. All right, so let's talk about, you don't have this slide, mm -hmm. our fields of view. So when you look through the microscope, what you see is this circle with the object in it. That's called your field of view, okay? And as we increase our magnification and zoom in, we see less and less of the object. That's what you guys told me in our question the other day. So under 40X, we see a large area. Under 100x, we see a medium size, and then under high power, we see a small area. You know, if this were what we were seeing, this is a paramecium. Under low power, we would see all of it. Under medium, we'd just see a section. Under high power, we'd see an even smaller section. Our field of view is decreasing as we go up in higher power. Also in these microscopes, there's this pointer. Looks like a needle. It's a part of the eyepiece. And it's used so like you could point something out to someone. Like you could rotate this so the pointer is pointing right something and say, hey, what is that part on this amoeba or whatever. So that's why it's in there. So to figure out our total magnification, like we said earlier, we multiply the power of the eyepiece. Ours are always 10. All of the eyepiece on our microscopes are 10. And then we multiply that by the power of whatever objective lens we are on. So if I'm on the 4x objective, I have a 10x eyepiece, what's the total amount of magnification? 40. So what it means is what I see here is 40 times larger than its actual size. It's being magnified 40 times. When I switch to medium power, Trista, what's my magnification? 100x. 10 times 10. And then if I switch to high power, 10 times 40, 400. my magnification is 400. So those are our possible magnifications that we can do in our microscopes. 40, 100, or 400. 
Which of those powers gives you the largest field of view? Jordan? 40. 40, low power. And high power gives you the smallest field of view. Increase the magnification, you decrease the field of view. The more you're zooming in, the less you're going to see. circle, that's the diameter of our field of view. 
and often we'll measure it in micrometers. And a micrometers has this weird abbreviation. This almost looks like a cursive U. It's the Greek symbol mu. It means micro. So micrometer. And there are a thousand micrometers in a single millimeter. So one micrometer is really, really small. No, you couldn't see an object that's one micrometer. So one micrometer is about one one thousandth of a millimeter. Point zero zero one of a millimeter. Mr. Arcuri is how much? What fraction of the truth? 
by one third. So how tall is he? One third of the tree. What's the tree? Six meters. So how? What is one third of six meters? Brandon? Two. So the star carries two meters tall. We can do the same thing looking at a microscope. Yeah? So look, in this case, I'm telling you, our field of view is 10 millimeters across. How many of these creatures can fit across? Raise your hand if you can tell me. How many of these could you fit side by side? Hey, job? About two. So each one is what fraction of the field of view? One half. So each one is how big? What's one half of 10 millimeters? Five millimeters. How many micrometers? Robert? Each one is a thousand. Five thousand? Yeah, five thousand. How about this little creature? How many would fit across? What's some new hands that keep seeing the same few people? Jordan, how many would fit across? About. 2.3 or something? I don't know. I think one's here. I think probably you could fit up. Could you fit one here? Yes. Yeah. And then maybe two more here, I thought. Yeah? Yeah, probably four. Each one is what fraction of the field? Oops, oh, sorry, I gave it to you. Each one is about one fourth. One fourth of the field of view is one million. How many micrometers is that? I'm going to call on somebody else, Bailey. One thousand. All right, last slide. Now how about this creature? How many fit across? Robert? None. Well, there's, how many are there? How many are there? One. One fits across, right? Goes all the way from one side to the other. So if the field of view is eight millimeters across, how big is it? Eight millimeters. Um, great, how many? Micrometers is that? 8,000. How about this one? How many fit across, Grace? Two. I think more than two. Three. I'd say three about. So each one is one third the field of view. What's one third of six? Two. Savannah? Two. Two what? Uh, no. Two millimeters. How many micrometers, David? 2,000. 2, How many of these will fit side by side, Robert? Uh, two. Yeah. I guess if you include the tail, I think it's a little more than two, actually. Three. Yeah? I'd say about three. If the field of view is nine millimeters, one third of nine is three millimeters. How many micrometers, Robert? Uh, 3,000. 3,000. And last, Cookie Monster. How many Cookie Monsters would fit across? What would you say, Alexandra? Um, four? Yeah? So each one is what fraction? Each one is what fraction of the total? What? Well, one fourth, right? Each oh. one is one fourth. Yeah. So what's one of them? One fourth of 20? Five millimeters. How many micrometers? Five thousand. All right, we understanding? Yeah. Because yeah. you're going to have to actually do this. On the test? Yep. And on your lab. Now, I guess we ran out of time. We got four minutes, three minutes. So we'll have to practice using our microscopes, just like Andy said. We'll have to practice using them. Thank you, Alexander, tomorrow. Tomorrow, we'll use them tomorrow.